so far, and I'm thankful for what the Lord did for us on Sunday, and a good homecoming, a good service, good meal, good fellowship, just a good day, amen, and I praise the Lord for it, appreciate everybody that helped uh, to make it a success, especially the meal, and so we appreciate everything that you did, and uh, so let's do pray tonight uh, for the service here this evening. And uh, let's do continue to pray for several folks that are sick tonight among the church, that God would touch them and the Lord would help them, and uh, knowing that God is able, amen. And uh, just continue to pray for one another. Remember all of our lost loved ones in prayer. Uh, the Lord will deal with their heart and uh, that they'll soon get saved. And uh, then if you will remember Brother Jimmy Jones and his family, uh, we rode over the other day to see him, and Brother Jim's not far from the shore, and so remember, remember his family in prayer that God will help him. And I know we we first got there, I went back there to see him, and he was asleep. And so and then a little while before we left, I went back, and he had woke up, and uh, talked to him a few minutes, and had prayer with him. But uh, he tried to say some stuff, but couldn't understand him. His real his voice real low. And, and uh, so just pray for him and uh, pray for his wife, pray for Jonathan and all the family, amen, that God will give them grace and the Lord will just meet the need there, amen. And uh, appreciate your prayer for my wife. She's finally doing pretty good, amen. So afraid to say much. Uh, afraid she might have a turn for the worse, but I appreciate you praying for her. I pray for spring. She's possibly going to have to have uh, some more surgery, and so just pray for her. God will touch her. God knows the need there, and so just remember her tonight in prayer. Amen. Any others we need to remember tonight? Any other requests? Amen. Remember my wife's brother. He's scheduled, I think, next week to do a heart catheterization. Twelfth. Okay. So he is from yeah. Week after next. So remember him in prayer. God will touch him. Sure appreciate that. Amen. Pray for Brother Mike and Holly. Remember uh, Tim Finch's sister? She had uh, back surgery here about a week or so ago, and, and she must have developed some type of pocket of uh, infection or something. So they had to operate on her again yesterday, and she's going to be in the hospital a couple of days. So remember her in prayer. Uh, God will meet the need there. Amen. Amen. 
to that. Remember our missionaries, pray for them. And God will continue to use them. God will keep them well. and Everything will be met, all their needs. And so let's do pray for them. Let's pray for one another, all of our families here at the church. Uh, God knows the burdens and needs. And I know sometimes folks don't share all their, their burdens, but I know that uh, they have them. We can just lift one another up in prayer, and uh, that's certainly what we need to do, amen, and uh, pray for each other, and uh, so let's do that tonight, amen. Then, of course, the upcoming Arise, just uh, two and a half weeks away, we'll be taking and going up to Arise for the youth meeting, so pray for the meeting there, and just pray that uh, God will give us safety as we travel, keep everybody well while we're there, and get everybody home, amen. I don't mind going. I just hate getting there. Amen. It's just a trip sometimes. And the older I get, the worse it gets. Amen. I, I guess that's age has got something to do with it. I don't know. And then, <laughs> Brother, Brother Ray said, yes, sir. <laughs> yeah, that sounds like a word of experience. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Well, I know when I was younger, we could leave here on Friday afternoon, drive all the way to Mount Airy, stay up all, almost all night Friday night and all day Saturday, get home midnight on Saturday night, and jump out of bed Sunday morning. It don't happen like that no more. <laughs> Amen. I need about two days to recuperate. But uh, I'm thankful for what God has done, what God is doing, and uh, appreciate what the Lord's done in our lives. Amen. Well, that's all it can. We'll let's gather around and pray tonight around the altar. If you can't get on the altar, we invite you to get on the one of the pews up here around the front, just gather together and, and uh, one mind, one accord, and pray together. Amen. And uh, do remember all the ones that are sick uh, here in our church, going through different things. And I know the Lord is able. Amen. Pray for those that are traveling. Uh, of course, vacation time. And, uh, of course, next week's the week of the fourth. There'll be a lot of people traveling, a lot of things going on. So let's pray God to keep everybody well and safe. Uh, on the roads, amen, and uh, just pray for each other tonight. Our Heavenly Father, as we gather tonight, Lord, we want to thank you again for the privilege we have to gather into the house of the Lord on this Wednesday night. Thank you, God, for every blessing that you've given us, Lord, from Sunday till now. Thank you for watching over us. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you, Father, for your goodness, and I pray, Lord, tonight that you just meet with us. Help us, Lord, here this evening as we gather, Lord, to worship you, Lord, to give praise and glory and honor to your name. Lord, as we come tonight, Lord, we come on this prayer meet tonight, we pray. Lord, bring all these requests. Lord, you've heard the many uh, spoken requests, and we ask you, God, to God honor each one that's been spoken, Father, that you touch and meet the needs. Lord, that you would answer, Father, give grace. Lord, in whichever way you answer, Lord, that you just give grace. Father, I pray tonight that you bless your people. Oh, God, especially I pray, Lord, for these that have gathered here tonight. Lord, that you would bless in their lives. Thank you, Lord, for them being here. Lord, sharing the burden together to pray for one another, to for pray for the needs of our church family. And Lord, we pray tonight for our missionaries. We pray for our school, we pray, God, for all of our homes and families that, uh, Lord, make up Victory Baptist Church. Lord, you know the very needs of their hearts, their lives, their emotional needs, physical needs, financial needs, spiritual needs. And I'm glad that you're God and you're able to meet all needs, no matter what it may be. And Father, tonight we're glad that we can bring all of these requests. And, God, we can bring our burdens and, Lord, our needs before you. Oh, God, we do pray that you'd meet with us and help us tonight. God, touch the ones who are sick, Lord, this evening. Bless them, Father, and help them. Lord, those who are recovering from surgeries, those who are facing surgery, Lord, those who have tests run, those who are going to have tests run, God, I pray that you just meet every need. And God, just touch and bless in a special way. But Lord, most of all, tonight we bring our lost loved ones and our lost family and Friends, Lord, to God, that you'd uh, deal with their heart. Oh, my Father, that the Spirit of God would convict them. And, Lord, that you would show them their need. And, 
Lord, when they see their need, they'll see Christ as their only hope. But, oh, Father, please help us that, God, we would live our lives. And, Lord, we could be a witness to them. And, Lord, that Jesus could be seen in us, that our light may shine. Oh, Father, that they might see uh, Christ in us, the hope of glory. And, Father, that they would too want uh, uh, that which you have done for us, Lord, in our lives. Father, tonight we thank you, God, for our church. And thank you for every home, every family and individual. Pray that you would bless. Pray for those, Lord, that are traveling, those who will be traveling in this coming week. And, God, we just ask you to bless and keep everybody well and safe. And, Lord, get everybody where they're going and home safely. We pray, Lord, for the Arise meeting coming up uh, shortly, Father, that you would bless it. And, God, use it, I pray, that souls will be saved. And the people of God, Lord, especially young people, the Lord will be stirred and, Lord, on fire for Christ. Father, I pray that you bless our group as we travel. Oh, God, give us traveling mercies and grace. And, Lord, keep everybody well and safe, Lord, on the roads. And, God, while we're there, God, I just pray that you do a work in all of our hearts, Lord. God, I pray you'd have your will, your way. Oh, my Father, we know that you're able. We're just trusting it tonight, again, for all the requests that have been made known. God, bless in a mighty way. Bless our young people. Our Lord, as they meet together tonight, God, meet with them and stir in their hearts and their lives and bless them, Father, in a special way. Pray, Lord, for spring, God, that you'd touch her. And I pray, uh, Lord, for Brother Combs. I pray that you'd help him. I pray, Lord, for Brother Mike and Holly. God, you continue to touch them and help them. Pray for my wife. Thank you, God, for touching her and helping her. I pray that you'd continue to bless. I pray for Sandra. God, that you'd touch her. God, I pray for Donna. Oh, Father, just all the many needs tonight. God, of all the ones who are sick among our church, uh, Lord, I pray for Tim Finch's sister in the hospital. God, that you'd meet the needs there. I pray for Brother Jimmy Jones. Oh, dear God, that you'd help him. Uh, touch him, Lord. We know you're able. And uh, I pray you bless his family. God, give him grace, comfort, Lord, and strength, Lord, in these days. God, please help us tonight. God, again, thank you for the privilege to gather here to pray. Oh, Lord, how we need a touch from heaven. Thank you, God, for your goodness and your mercy. Lord, all that's done will give you glory and honor. Give you praise for every answered prayer. For we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. When you get back to your seat, let's uh, sing Amazing Grace. I don't know anything more amazing than the grace of God. 228, I believe it is, in your hymn book, if you need it.
that tonight. I do thank God for his grace. Amen. If you have your Bible tonight, I want you to turn to the book of Psalms, Psalm 35 this evening. <clears throat> Psalm 35, and while you're turning there, of course, this coming Sunday, uh, we'll be having uh, God in Country Day. And uh, encourage, if you can, to wear some patriotic colors, red, white, and blue, uh, for Sunday morning and Sunday night. And uh, so we look forward to that. Amen. As we pray for our country, our, certainly our country needs prayer. Uh, I tell you, I believe that our only hope is God. And uh, it's not in the White House. I don't want to even get started on that, but I know it's not. I know there's no hope there. And I wonder sometimes the man that's living there even though he lives there, but uh, anyhow, sad. If that was my daddy, I would, uh, I believe I'd hide him <laughs> from the world so he wouldn't make a fool of himself every day. Every time he opens his mouth, he just tells something stupid. But uh, I believe I would just try to keep him out of sight. Amen. Just let him, just let him do uh, written messages <laughs> where somebody else wrote. But anyhow, we just need to pray for our country. I love America. I'm thankful that I live here. I wouldn't want to live nowhere else. And uh, I'm sure many of you, some of you, have been in other part of the other countries. I'll just be honest with you. There's no place like America. I don't care how beautiful that those countries are. I've been in some beautiful countries and how historic those countries are, but there's still no place quite like this place. And uh, that's why everybody wants to get here. And uh, so uh, we just need to pray, amen. That's what we'll uh, do a lot of this weekend as we think about our uh, the birthday of America, amen. In uh, Psalm 35 tonight, I want to begin reading in verse number 1. The Bible says, Plead my cause, O Lord, with them that strive with me. Fight against them that fight against me. Take hold of shield and buckler and stand up for mine help. Draw out also the spear and stop the way against them that persecute me. Say unto my soul, I am thy salvation. Let them be confounded and put to shame that seek after my soul. Let them be turned back and brought to confusion that devise my hurt. Let them be as chaff before the wind and let the angel of the Lord chase them. Let their way be dark and slippery and let the angel of the Lord persecute them. For without cause they have hid for me their net in a pit, which without cause they have digged for my soul. Let destruction come upon him at unawares, and let his net that he hath hid catch himself. Into that very destruction let him fall. And my soul shall be joyful in the Lord. It shall rejoice in his salvation. All my bones shall say, Lord, who is like unto thee, which delivers the poor from him that is too strong for him? Yea, the poor and the needy from him that spoileth him. False witnesses did rise up. They laid to my charge things that I knew not. They rewarded me evil for good to the spoiling of my soul. But as for me, when they were sick, my clothing was sackcloth. I humbled my soul with fasting, and my prayer returned into mine own bosom. I behaved myself as though he had been my friend or brother. I bowed down heavily as one that mourneth for his mother. But in mine adversity they rejoiced and gathered themselves together, yea, the abjects gathered themselves together against me, and I knew it not. They did tear me and cease not. 
with hypocritical mockers in feasts. They gnashed upon me with their teeth. Lord, how long wilt thou look on? Rescue my soul from their destructions, my darling from the lions. I will give thee thanks in the great congregation. I will praise thee among much people. Let not them that are mine enemies wrongfully rejoice over me. Neither let them wink with their eye that hate me without a cause. For they speak not peace, but they devise deceitful matters against them that are quiet in the land. Yea, they opened their mouth wide against me and said, Aha, aha, our eye have seen it. This thou hast seen, O Lord, keep not silence. O Lord, be not far from me. Stir up thyself and awake to my judgment, even unto my cause, my God and my Lord. Judge me, O my Lord God according to thy righteousness, and let them not rejoice over me. Let them not say in their hearts, Ah, so would we have it. Let them not say we have swallowed him up. Let them be ashamed and brought to confusion together that rejoice in, at mine hurt. Let them be clothed with shame and dishonor that magnify themselves against me. Let them shout for joy and be glad that favor my righteous cause, yea, let them say continually, let the Lord be magnified, which hath pleasure in the prosperity of his servant. And my tongue shall speak of thy righteousness and of thy praise all the day long. Lord, thank you for the privilege tonight to open your word and to read from the word of God. Pray, Lord, that you would add your blessings to the reading and to the hearing Lord, to our hearts tonight. God, may you help me, Lord, to be able to preach the word. God, may you make us a blessing and a help to your people. God, may we all be able to leave tonight saying that it's been good to be in the house of the Lord. Father, thank you now for all that's done, and we'll praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. I want to preach tonight from these verses that we've read. We've read the entire chapter of here in Psalm 35, and uh, I want to preach tonight uh, from uh, these verses on this thought, Lord, who is like unto thee, amen. I'm glad tonight to be able to say there's none like him, amen. There is none uh, like him. The Bible said here in verse number 10, he said, all my bones shall say, Lord, who is like unto thee? which delivers the poor from him that is too strong for him, yea, the poor and the needy from him that spoileth him. And so he says, Lord, who is like unto thee? Now, Psalm 35 is another prayer of David. And David, this whole psalm is simply David's heart, and he's crying out unto the Lord. And certainly we can deduct from this psalm and from the other psalms that David was a man of prayer. David spent a lot of time in prayer. That could be part of the reason that uh, David was considered to be a man after God's own heart because he sought the Lord so often and so many times in prayer. Amen. And in this prayer, David appeals under God to send judgment upon the enemies of God and the persecutors of his righteous people. Amen. And we can certainly see a, a proper pattern for you and I to follow as well when we're praying. How often is it that we try to take the things out of God's hands and uh, take measures into our own hands? Uh, sometimes we would much rather go ahead and do what we want to do instead of having to wait on God. But most of the time when we've done that, we've made a bigger mess than it was to start with. And most of the time we end up being even more hurt because of what we do uh, in our own lives. And uh, so David, we, we must remember tonight that when we face the wrath of man 
And especially when we face the wrath of those around us because of us trying to live a godly life, trying to serve God, trying to be right and live right and do right. And of course, we know that the Bible tells us, yea, and all that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. And uh, so, but when we do that, and they are really not opposing us, but they are opposing him whom we stand for. Amen. It's not us, but it's Christ in us is what they don't like. The world don't like. Christ, amen. The world despises the things of God. And when you follow the things of God and live out in your life the things of God, the world will not like it, amen. And therefore we must remember that. The, the psalmist said here in verse number seven, he said, for without cause have they hid for me their net in a pit, which without cause they have digged for my soul. David said they have done all of these things and they really had no cause to do it. In other words, David said, I really, I've done nothing to provoke them into doing what they have done and what they're trying to do against me. He said, I, they, they're doing it without cause because I've done nothing against them. And so the world at times, they just, they do things because that's who they are. And they attack the people of God and they attack the things of God. And uh, because they are in direct rebellion against the word of God, and therefore anybody that is living for God uh, brings light to their evil deeds, amen. And therefore they are exposed. And then, of course, uh, instead of repenting and getting right with God, they get mad and they rebel. And so we've got to remember that. And so David is praying. He's seeking the Lord uh, for these things. Now, we've got to also remember what the Bible tells us in Romans chapter 12 and verse number 19. He said, Dearly beloved, avenge not yourselves, but rather give place under wrath. That's a hard thing to do. <laughs> It's a hard thing to let somebody run over you. It is, isn't it? Because what we want to do is come back. Amen. And, uh, but here the Bible said that we're not to avenge ourselves, but rather give place under wrath. And here's why. For it is written, vengeance is mine. I will repay saith the Lord. And I will guarantee you this tonight, anything, any vengeance that I can mete out to them is not going to be that bad. But you let the God of heaven mete out his vengeance upon them, they're going to suffer. Amen? And God said, vengeance is mine. I will repay, saith the Lord. You say, well, I'm not going to let them get by. They're not going to get by. It may look like they're going to get by, but they're not going to get by. God said, you just do what's right. You live right. You just let me have it. You give place to wrath and just let me take over. Now, God doesn't always react as soon as like we would react. You know, We've got a fast reactor. All of us do. Let somebody pull that in front of y'all. You got a reaction for that, don't you? I'm not going to ask you what it is. We don't want to get anybody embarrassed tonight. But we are fast at reacting to things. But God, his timing is not like ours. And God knows how to be patient and to bring vengeance exactly when it is needed. Amen. And so we must remember that. And in this prayer, though David asked God to take care of his enemies, in reality, David was praying that God would 
not only take care of his enemies, but take care of the enemies of God. He knew that if they were his enemies, they were God's enemies. He was following God. He was serving the Lord. And if, and if they were attacking him, they weren't just attacking him. They were attacking God. And so I want you to notice a couple of things. First of all, notice David's petition. Now, David petitions the Lord for three things. First of all, we see David's plea. Look at verse number one of Psalm 35. He said, plead my cause, O Lord, with them that strive with me. Fight against them that fight against me. This is David's plea. He is crying out to God. He is saying, plead my cause, O Lord, with them that strive against me. Fight with them that fight against me. And we can see the desperation in David's words. I believe David have a, had a heavy heart when he's pinning these down and the things that he was uh, going through in his life. And you can hear the desperation. David had absolutely no one except the Lord to turn to. Nobody. He had nobody to turn to but the Lord. And he turned to God and pleaded his cause before him. David was pleading with God for his assistance because David knew that he in himself could not match the strength of, of his enemies. And so he pleads with the Lord for God's assistance in this situation that he's in in his life. I don't know about y'all tonight, but if I could ever learn myself that the first thing that I should do is cry to the Lord. Why is it so often that's the last thing we do? Again, we're trying to take matters in our own hands. We're trying to fix this thing ourselves when we should first and foremost say, God, here I am. I need help. Lord, this is more than I can deal with. This is more than I know what to do. And David went to the Lord, amen. David's plea, but notice secondly, David's protector. Look at verses two and three. He said, take hold of the shield and buckler and stand up for mine help. Draw out also the spear and stop the way against them that persecute me. Say unto my soul, I am thy salvation. David realized who his protector was, amen. And the reason that many people do not call upon God is because they do not have a clear picture of of who God really is in their lives. Now, David, when he begins to pray, he can, we can see something in David's prayer that might encourage our hearts because David's description of who the Lord is. In other words, David sees God as a great warrior and he could protect him in his life. I'm glad God is able, amen. And David says, draw out also the spear. You're the shield and the buckler. Stand up for my help. He sees in God a great warrior that is able to meet the needs of his life and to give him protection in his life. I dare say that David probably was thinking back in his early years when he was out there tending those sheep, you remember when David said that a lion came out? Remember what he did? He killed it. A bear came out. He killed it. Then he had to face a giant. What did he do to him? He killed him. He knew God was behind him. He knew God was for him. He knew God had aided him in the past and the same God that had aided him 
in days gone by was the same warrior that could stand up for him right now. Hallelujah. Hey, most of us in this building tonight, we've been saved for some time. I guarantee you, you can look back in your life and you can see there have been times where, where God stood for you and helped you and delivered you. Hey, if he did it then, he can do it now. Amen. He can do it now. David sees God as a great warrior who could protect him. David knew that God was able to protect him, and, and so he asked God to protect him. Amen. I don't know about y'all tonight, but I'm glad God is our protector. Amen. God is our protector. Even though David had a sling and a stone, it wasn't really the sling and the stone that protected him. It was the God of heaven. Amen. I'm saying tonight we may have all the things in our lives that we might have comfort in for protection, but it is God who is our divine protector. And David asked God to protect him. Remember what James said in James chapter 4, verse number 2. He said, Ye lust and have not, ye kill and desire to have, and cannot obtain, ye fight and war, yet ye have not. Because you ask not. A lot of times we do without because we won't ask. <laughs> Somebody says, I ain't asking for nothing. Well, you're going to miss out on a whole lot. Ask. What did Jesus say? Ask and you shall receive. If you ask not, you have not. Amen. And that's exactly what James says now. And how we think of the Lord makes a big difference in the way we call on God. If, a lot of, if people don't have much confidence in God, they're not going to really call on him in confidence and faith, believing that he's able to help them. But if we see God for who he is, you can call on him for everything. Amen? Now, David was going through one of the most trying times in his life. I mean, this was one of the most difficult times in his life. And during those difficult days, David saw God as a warrior who was able to protect him during these days. David, we see not only David's plea and David's protector, but then we see David's plan. Now, sometimes when we pray, I'm afraid that we are vague in our prayers. I believe we need to learn to be specific in our prayers. Amen? And, and I know we can be vague at times, and we, we pray that God would bless our church, family, and, and we know that we're trying to cover everybody. But then if you really want to get down to praying, start praying for each one of them individually. Amen. And so sometimes we are too vague in our prayers. And, uh, and we've got to sometimes be more specific. Now, notice David had some specifics in his prayers, in this petition that he's making. Look at verse number five. Here's what David is asking God. Now, remember, David's pled with God, said, God, you're my protector. Lord, I need your help. I need you to stand up for me. And then David, this is what David is asking God. This is what he's petitioning God particularly for. Look at verse 5. Now he's praying. He's talking to God. Let them be as chaff before the wind. I like this one. And let the angel of the Lord chase them. Well, I've seen some folks I wish the angel of God got after, don't you? So he said, let them be as chaff in the wind. Verse 6, let their way be dark and slippery. Lord, won't you bless them real good with darkness and slippery times. And then he said, not only let the angel of the Lord chase them, but he said, let the angel of the Lord persecute them. <laughs> For without cause have they hid from me their net in the pit. 
which without cause they have digged for my soul. Look at verse 8. Let destruction come upon them at unawares. I mean, he's very specific in his prayer. He's not just saying, Lord, I want you to cover them with some bad things. Oh, he's being specific. Number one, Lord, he said, I want you to let them be like chaff in the wind. I want you to let their way be dark and slippery. I want to see the angel of the Lord chase them and persecute them. I want destruction to come upon them unawares. In other words, when they're least expecting it. Then he said, and let his net that he had he had catch himself into that very destruction, let him fall. And so these things David was specific about. Amen. I mean, David, and, and, and if we're not careful, we think, well, that's not a that, that shouldn't be a way a Christian prays. Well, you don't know what David's going through. I remember years ago, my pastor, he's in heaven, but I remember years ago when he, when we were just young Christians and he would talk to us, and we'd teaching us how to pray and telling us all kinds of different things as he was a young Christian. And he said there was a time that uh, two fellows got into it at the church. And uh, they couldn't get it settled. And they finally said, let's just go to the altar. And we'll just pray God to kill the one that's wrong. They were specific. I don't know if ever, I don't know if ever made it to the altar. But I'd almost be afraid for me and a brother to go to the altar and pray God kill the one that's wrong. We might have a double funeral. They were, they were specific in their prayers. Amen. I ain't never gotten that far along in my Christian life that I could have that much confidence that God would kill the one that's wrong and I didn't think I was him. But we don't know what David's going through. You don't know the hard times David's having and, and these things that David asked for may seem to be malicious. They may seem to be harsh, but it's because we cannot feel the pain and the duress that David was feeling. Sometimes a person gets in such a, a way that what comes out of their heart may never come out of yours because you've never walked where they're walking. Amen. You and I, we're only bystanders. We're, we're reading this tonight. We, we've never been to where he's at. And it's easy if we're not careful to judge David as being harsh when we don't feel uh, any of the pain that he was feeling in his life. Amen. It's kind of like sometimes when a, a family member is murdered and they catch the murderer. And many times they have to restrain the, the dad or, or somebody in the family from jumping over and, and reaping their own vengeance on them. I've often thought, man, somebody ever done anything to one of my girls or one of my grandchildren, I, the law better get them before I do. Amen. And we don't know what, that, what it's like. We, we think we can think about it and think we know, but David, he's going through it. And David is praying and pouring his heart out. But then notice David's pleasure. Look at verse 9. And he said, And my soul shall be joyful in the Lord. It shall rejoice in his salvation. David's reaction, we find that he said, my soul will be joyful. And David's joy, I don't believe, was, is not in the suffering of his enemies. But David's joy was in the Lord. His joy was not in seeing God pouring out vengeance upon his enemies, but his joy was in knowing the Lord. Amen. Because it was the Lord who took care of him. And we should never find joy in the destruction of others. But we can always find joy in the salvation that has been given to you and I. Amen. We should never rejoice when anybody falls. We should never rejoice when anyone is being 
dealt with under the chastening hand of God or the vengeance of God. Amen. Then David says, all my bones, in verse 10, all my bones shall say, Lord, who is like unto thee? <laughs> David just is in awe of God and who he is. Well, I'm glad God knows what to do in spite of us. In spite of those things that we may pray at times that when we're hurt or when we're broken and we're pouring our heart out and in, in the hurt or or depression, or whatever it may be. I'm glad God knows. He remembers our frame. He remembers that we are but dust, amen. I'm glad, thank God, he understands where we are. He understands where we're, where we're coming from. And even in all of that, we can stand in awe that God will always do right in spite of us. In spite of us. David said, who is like under thee, which deliverest the poor from him that is too strong for him. Yea, the poor and the needy from him that spoils him. David rejoiced that the Lord is a God of justice and a God of mercy, that God delivered him, amen. David provides us with an example in this psalm that when things become troubling. <laughs> I don't know about y'all, but there's a lot of times things become troubling. And thank God he did not take matters in his own hands, but he poured his heart out to the Lord, amen, and placed it all in the hands of God. And, and David saw God as his protector, able to protect him from his enemies. And, and you and I, when we see the problems and we see the persecutions, we must understand and realize, hey, if God be for us, who can be against us? Amen? And when we pray, we need to pray with specifics. Amen? And God is able. And we could go out like David did and say, Lord, who is like unto thee? Amen? I mean, there's nobody like him. God, there is no one like him. And so tonight, when things get troubling, when burdens are heavy, when persecutions arise, the best thing that we can learn to do is pray and seek the Lord and put it in God's hands and let God do what needs to be done. Never take it into our own hands, but put it in the hands of God. And just trust him with it. Amen. Our Heavenly Father, I thank you tonight. Lord, for the privilege that we've had to just study a little bit of thy word tonight. I'm glad, Lord, that there's a God in heaven that understands who we are. And what we're thinking. and What we're feeling. And Lord, that you're not taken by surprise. Lord, as the Bible tells us that. You are in all points tempted like as we are yet without sin. That we have not a high priest which cannot be touched with the feelings of our infirmities. But Lord, you understand us perfectly. Lord, sometimes we don't even understand ourselves. Lord, surely there are times when we don't understand what somebody else is going through. But God, I'm glad you understand perfectly what we're dealing with and what's happening in our lives and the emotions that we're feeling. And God, thank you that we can pray and or we can find help from him who is our protector. We can find help from him who is our great warrior. And God, we know that if you're for us, who could be against us? God, bless your people tonight. Encourage their hearts. Teach us, Lord, to rely more on you day by day. And, Father, we thank you, praise you for what you've done, what you're doing, and all that you're going to do. We ask it in Jesus' precious name. While we stand tonight and our heads are bowed,
David shows us some very important things that we need in our lives. Number one, pray. Go to the Lord. Take whatever it is that's bothering you or against you or whatever it is, take it to the Lord in prayer. Be specific in prayer. If you have a need, be specific about that need. It's not God, He already knows, but He wants you to let Him know. He wants to see the concern from your heart and the confidence and faith that you have in Him regarding whatever it may be. We have a God in heaven who is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think. David knew that. We need to know that. Father, thank you again for the ones here tonight. Thank you for our young people. Thank you, God, for every blessing you've given to Victory Baptist Church. God, may your blessings abide upon us in these days. Lord, may you bless the remainder of the week. God, we look forward to the Lord's day. God, we pray that you'd meet with us and help us as we gather to pray. God, I ask you to help our country. Oh, God, we need your touch. Help us, we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Certainly appreciate you being here tonight. Hope you have a good rest of the week. Lord willing, we'll be back Sunday morning for Sunday school at 10, preaching 11, Sunday night at 6. And uh, so pray for the services. Amen. Invite some folks to come. Uh, pray for folks that will be traveling. God, I'll keep everybody safe and well. Pray for the sick. And most of all, pray for the lost. Amen. God will save them. Amen. Appreciate you being here tonight.